Okay, as we are speeding through the second half of the semester, we are working still on Unit 11, our spot illustration project. This is where we're creating clean digital inked line art that we're going to turn into a vector, and then we're going to learn to color behind to create basically thicker images that are versatile and can be used on a variety of backgrounds. I wanted to point out in these past student examples that it can be a very blurry sketch, but then the, the line art will be incredibly clean and precise. Now notice that this line art goes from thin to thick. So this is called a varied line weight. And then when they added color, that line weight was very strong and it overpowered the subtlety of the color they wanted. So they actually do something where they replace the black color with its own color. It's called a color hold. So this is still digital coloring instead of digital painting because it's coloring behind an outline, right? Even if you end up coloring the outline at the end. This student example is more based on animation and uses a really thin fixed line weight. So this line weight is the same everywhere. And then the color behind, you know, just fills that in. And the, the line stayed black throughout. So this was not changed. So you'll see just lots of different examples. Here you have the line changed color in some places, like on the border, and not in others. Right. So there's a lot of flexibility, even though we're just doing line art and then coloring it in. Now, a big part of this is getting clean line art. That's where we left off last class, right? And we were using PhotoP to do it, and then I showed you how to use Adobe Illustrator, which is not freeware, in order to trace it into a vector. Now I'm going to show you the best freeware tools I've found to do the same thing. And I put it into the assignment. It's called Vectorizer AI. And I don't know how long it will be free, a vectorizer is an option that's been around. It's not a very good vectorizing tool. But vectorizer right now is completely free. You don't even need to log in. So what I'm going to do is open up my assignment. And I'm going to take my test PNG, the same one that I got out of PhotoP. This is a raster file, right? You can see some of the pixels and some of the little debris. And this is what I brought into Illustrator to image trace in the previous videos. So now I'm going to take that same file and try out this, this online. And it's actually a lot easier. <laughs> you just drop it in. And then you say, OK. And I'm going to, it's going to do a better job if you kind of crop closer to it, because it has resolution limitations. Just because it's free. Okay, and then you say okay. And then it will do its thing. And what we're wanting it to come up with is something like the SVG that we made out of Illustrator. Right? That's super clean. No longer pixel based. We'll see what we get. Okay, here it shows us the result. We can look at it before we download it. And this reminds me a lot of vector magic. And I see a little blip there. I see little blips here, but it's pretty good. And then, of course, we can bring this into Vector.com or Adobe Illustrator, you know, to fix it. But that looks that looks strong to me. I think this is a pretty good algorithm. There's little things I need to, to work on. So what am I going to do? I'm going to download it. It's going to give me options. First, I'm going to download it as an SVG because that can go into Vector.com. And I'm just going to leave all of these options. I'm not going to try to to define it too much. Leave all the defaults. And then I'm also going to save it as an EPS file. And that's good for Adobe pro 
programs. If you're in Illustrator, you can also save it as both SVG or EPS. Now, the difference is EPS does not go into Photopea, but SVG does. All right, so here they are. Also, um, there's Vector.com, which we use for our logos, right? And SVGs can be opened in Vector, but EPSs cannot, right? EPSs are really for working between Illustrator and Photoshop within Adobe. And they are kind of going out of fashion now, which is why I think Preview can no longer view EPSs. Which is kind of a weird thing to me because I'm so used to them. But times change. All right, so now I'm in Vector. I'm going to open a file in Vector. And it tells you the type of files you can open. An SVG, a PNG, a JPEG, or a Vector file. So now I want to find this it's in downloads this SVG I just saved and I call these test files that I that I use to vectorize and then I can look at the layers and there's a group and that makes it kind of tough because if it's a group that's upsetting <laughs> it is a vector but it means I can't then go in and refine the individual paths Huh, I'm surprised by that. Because if I open it up with Illustrator, the same SVG that I got out of the vectorizer, I am able to see the individual vectors. So it might take more playing and maybe something to do with those default settings. But I think that vectorizer, vectorizer AI is, is the best tool I've seen so far. Because it does give me a clean vector for free, but maybe with certain settings I can get it to work with vector.com, the free vector program. But that's but you only need it if you want to make these little adjustments, right? Like you could do in vector.com if it's if it gives you the option. Yes, Betsy, question. So basically, if you have Illustrator, you have that image trace option. And it used to be that image trace wasn't so good, but it's gotten pretty darn good. So I kind of like this as an option too, which is why I added it into the assignment so I don't forget about it. Because this is a lot like this old program I used called Vector Magic, where it's a simpler interface. And its algorithm is already pretty good. <laughs> Like, you don't have to ignore the white. It knows you don't want the white. And so it just, however you can get there to clean line art, you know, whatever tools work for you. But if you remember when I was doing with Image Trace, in order to get certain things to show up, like the toes on the feet, I had to sacrifice other things, you know, in my settings. And so this, this has like just little, little dodges that sometimes I might want to fix if I'm being really, really particu particular. But they're both going to give me clean vectors that will do the job at the end of the day. So why don't I use this one? So then how do I save it? I'm going to save this as an SVG so that I can bring it into Photopea. So basically, I'm just updating this SVG. I'm going to thin this out a little bit. Come on, there we go. So now that we have clean line art, I'm going to save that. onto my computer as an SVG and I'll call it vector because this will be the one I use. And this is my clean line art. 
Now we drew this in photo P and now we're bringing it back into photo P. And it was something that's not absolutely necessary to take it through this vector stage. But let me show you the advantage of it now. So if I open up photo P and I can use it to open what we were working on before, like this PSD, right? This was my line art. And then remember how I brought in the vector. So I had, this was the line art I drew using the brush tool in photo P at 11 by 14 inches by 350 pixels per inch, right? Ah. <laughs> okay. Now, then I brought in the vector for it and I put it on top. This was the one outputted from Illustrator. And I don't know why that's looking weird right now. It's not a good thing. So now in the same way, I'm going to bring in the SVG that I just saved and downloaded. And it's right here. Let's see if that works. It does. Now it's just sized a little differently just because of the artboards. But if I hold down option, I can scale it down to fit exactly with what I had done before, right? And I don't even need to, it's just its own thing. So as long as we have clean line art, that's big enough. In fact, I can leave it a little bit bigger because I might as well use this full 11 by 14 inches. I'm gonna get rid of this other one and what's the difference? You can see how thick that line is there and how clean it is here. And now this is outputting from the vector and I'm going to keep it as a smart object always and it will always be as clean as possible for whatever pixel resolution I want. You know, it's scalable. Now I can go to my assignment and I can add my line art. So I'm going to update this one and I'll say Adobe Illustrator or this new program, Vectorizer AI. And I would say for spot illustration, as opposed to logos, this works. You know, if you do kind of clean line art and you want to turn it into a vector for like a t-shirt design, I think Vectorizer AI is a great way to do it, as long as it's just a single color. Photo P has vector shapes, but it can't convert raster into vector. And the problem with Photo P and Photoshop, because they're clones of each other, is that you can't save a file as a vector. Does that make sense? So that's why you need vector.com. So you can have that SVG file, that scalable vector file. Okay, so let's put it in. So how do I save this now? My clean line art, because I can't put a vector file onto canvas. I'm just going to turn off the background and I'll save it, export it as a PNG. Just free floating inked lines. It's going to go to my downloads. I'm going to mark it orange. And I load it into my assignment five post. So now I've got two of my three requirements. I've got my sketch and I've got my clean high resolution line art. Because we're mostly using freeware and if you want to keep it purest in freeware, you can use vectorizer AI and turn it into a vector and then bring that in to back to photo P as a smart object, just drag and drop it in. And the advantage of that is now you can check your image size and make sure that you're at 11 by 14 by 350 and then your line art will automatically size up to it because it's a vector. It will be perfectly clean no matter the size. Now we get to add color. 